Hello, welcome to today's math lesson. Today is, well, let us see. I think today is Saturday the 28th, right? Yeah, okay. All right, let's get going. Here's what we're gonna be learning about today. We're gonna learn how to order fractions and decimals. To do that, we're gonna learn about LCD. And then we're gonna learn about ordering fractions and decimals. Um, you need to get your you need to get out your capture sheet before we begin. Okay, and that's the only thing that you have to do today. All right, so let's get going on learning about the LCD. LCD stands for the least common denominator. Okay, so that sounds really similar to what the least common multiple, right? And that's because it is the LCD is the LCM of both the denominators. So the least common denominator, okay, is the LCM of both denominators. Let's show, let me show you what that looks like, okay? Okay, let me show you what that looks like. So if we have two fractions, such as, let's see, one half and three fourths, okay? What is the LCM of two and four? This should be a quick one, okay? It's four, all right? So that means that your least common denominator is four, your LCD is four, okay? So we're gonna try to get both denominators to be fourths, okay? Lucky for us, this one already is, okay? But one half, how do we get that to be fourths? We need to multiply the top and bottom by two. Yeah, okay, so now we're in fourths, and now we have fractions that have an LCD. All right, let's do one more that's a little bit harder. Two fifths and three sevenths. What is the LCD or the LCM of five and seven? Good, it's 35, okay? Uh, a thing to know, when you have two denominators that are relatively prime, you can multiply them together. For example, five and seven are relatively prime because they do not have any common factors. Okay, so to get two fifths to 30 fifths, because that's what we need the denominator, we're gonna multiply by seven. Okay, so two times seven is 14, and then three sevenths to get that to um, 30 fifths, we need to multiply by five. We get 15 30 fifths. Okay, we're gonna have a ton more practice with this. Okay, so um, for now, we're gonna move on to our next topic for the day. We're gonna learn now about ordering fractions. So there are two steps, okay? Um, and it's really not that hard. The first step is to make the fractions have the same denominator, okay? And that's why we just learned LCD, because to order fractions, um, ordering fractions means using these symbols. Let's make this bigger. Ordering fractions means using these symbols greater than, sorry, less than, greater than and equal to, okay? So in order to do that, they need to have the same denominator. Then you just determine which one's bigger. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like, okay? Okay. So let's say we have a problem that looks like this. Okay, three fifths and seven tenths, and you need to fill that circle in with greater than, less than, or equal to, okay? Alrighty, but we can't compare them yet because they don't have common denominators, okay? But we can easily make these have common denominators. We need to find the LCD first, least common denominator. What is that? Good, it's 10, okay? And 
lucky for us, this one's already intense. Let me change my marker slightly. Um, that one's already intense. Three fifths to get to tenths. What do we need to multiply? Five times two equals ten. Three times two equals six tenths. Okay, so now we can replace this with six tenths. And now that's really easy to see. Six tenths versus seven tenths, which one's bigger? Obviously seven tenths. All right, let's do some more practice before I send you on your own to complete those problems. Okay, one more practice here before you go on to do uh, some problems on your own. This one will be a little bit harder. Sorry, I'm going to change that to be 5 eighths. 2 thirds and 5 eighths. We need greater than, less than, or equal to. Okay, so we need to have them have common denominators. What is the least common denominator of 3 and 8? Good, it's 24, okay. Since these are relatively prime 3 and 8, you can just multiply them together to get your LCD. So 2 thirds times 3 times what is 24? 8. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. 2 times 8, 16. Okay. 5 eighths times something equals something 24 eighths. 8 times what is 24? 3. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. 5 times 3 is 24. You get 15 24 eighths. These were really close, right? 16 24 eighths and 15 24 eighths. But hopefully you can see which one's bigger. 16 versus 15. It's 16. All right. The reason we need common denominators is just by looking at 2 thirds and 5 eighths, you can't tell which one's bigger. All right. So we get them the common denominators so that we know. Okay. Talk about ordering decimals. The thing to remember here is your place value chart. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the screen. Um, and take a look at this and try to remember all of the place values, okay? This is the thousands, okay? This is the hundreds. I'm so sorry, I'm wrong. Uh, this is the hundreds. This is the tens. This is the ones. This is the tenths, okay? This is the hundreds. And this is the thousandths, okay? So that's the important thing to remember. So if we were comparing numbers that did not include decimals, like so, two sixty and four sixty, we would look at the largest um, place value, right? So the largest place value here is hundreds. And the largest place value here is also hundreds. Then you look at the numbers in the hundreds. Four versus two. Four is bigger. That's all you got to do. Okay. Now, if we have a number such as... Two six oh one, two thousand six hundred one versus four hundred sixty. We're gonna look at the largest place value again. On this side, the largest place value is the thousands. On this side, though, the largest place value is the hundreds, right? So since this one has thousands and this one doesn't, this one has to be bigger, okay? Because you can think about two thousands is bigger than zero thousands, right? Okay, it's the same thing for decimals. I'll show you the slide. I just want to show with an example first. It's really the same thing with decimals. Let's say we have 1.29 versus 0 0.8. We look at the largest place value. 
The largest place value here is the ones. The largest place value here is the ones. Okay, so you look at the numbers in the ones. This number is bigger. One is bigger than zero. Easy. Okay. Now we need to look at something like this. Okay. We look at the largest place value here, and it's tens. We look at the largest place value here, and it's ones. Since this one has tens, and this one does not, we know the one with tens is bigger. Okay, so that's still only looking at the whole numbers. What about when we have a situation with no ones? No one. There's no, there are no ones in this situation. So we look at the largest place value still. Okay, there's no ones, right? Because there's zero. All right, this one has tenths. Okay. And this one, you could say it has tenths. Let's do that. And then you would see six tenths versus zero tenths. This one's got to be bigger. You might have also looked at this and said, wait, there's a zero in the tenth place. That means that there are no tenths. So the largest place value over here is the hundreds place. So if this one has six tenths and this one has no tenths, this one's still gonna be bigger. So we're gonna do some more practice problems, but I'm gonna show the slide first, okay? So this is a place value chart. I know you've seen this before, okay? Um, hundreds, tens, ones, and then decimal point, then tenths, hundredths, and thousandths, okay? So we always look at the largest units first, all right? Which is basically what I just said. So we're gonna do um, two practice problems from your sheet. I'm gonna pick them and then the rest you will have the chance to do on your own. Again, we're still using these signs here, um, greater than, less than, and equal to, okay. So here's one that I'm going to pick. All right, first thing to do, look at the biggest place value. What's the largest place value over here? Ones, the largest place value over here is tens. This one's gotta be bigger. It has the larger, largest place value. Okay, one ten versus zero tens, right? It's gotta be bigger. Okay, next one, that wasn't so bad. Okay, we look for our largest place value here, no ones, no tenths. Our largest place value is hundredths. All right, over here, no ones, no tenths. Largest place value is, again, hundredths. Cool. So then we look at the, the hundredths. We have seven hundredths and six hundredths. Since this one has the larger one, seven versus six, this one is bigger. Okay. Your, the rest of your assignment today is to finish up that capture sheet. Try all the problems on your own. If there are any that you can't seem to do, um, that's totally fine. You can ask me if you have questions, and I'll be happy to go over them with you. One more time in case you missed the notes for today. Here's the LCD notes. You can pause and write down if you have to. Here are the ordering fractions notes. You can pause and write down if you have to. And finally, here are the notes for ordering decimals. You can pause and write down if you have to. You don't have to write down the chart. Okay. Sounds good. Um, tomorrow, you're going to have practice. I think we're planning on doing uh, some sort of game tomorrow to help practice. So it's not just worksheets. Um, but uh, I hope this lesson made sense. If it didn't, you can always come ask questions. Okay. Good luck. Have a great day.